This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's access media station, Plains FM, and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. It's time for Emergence News on Plains FM 96.9, Citizen Made Radio. of Emergence News. My name is Nigel and I'm joined by John, a Shear International volunteer here in Christchurch, New Zealand, Aotearoa. And on this program, we ask questions and we, we do our best, to the best of our ability, we try to find the correct answers for you. And on this program, we ask, who is the new world teacher? Who is the world teacher? We ask what changes to our political, economic and social structures are needed. We also ask what will it take to end all wars so that resources spent on military arms can actually go on human welfare instead. So on today's program, we're forced to do things a little bit differently, John, because due to the challenges of COVID, we haven't, well, some of us haven't been able to meet like we used to, mm -hmm. uh, to meet in person to plan our, our program. So we've got our headphones on, in position, the microphone's on, Laura's in the production suite there in the control room, ready to press all the buttons. Our producer, Laura. Yeah, I love saying that. I'm the only person I know that can say that. I have a producer. Laura is my producer. <laughs> She's going. Do you realise that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't think it's got anything to do with me. That's not personal, is it, Laura? <laughs> no, she's shaking her head. It's not personal. <laughs> but none of us have any idea what the other two are bringing to the table today, and I kind of like oh, that. Oh, yes. Yeah, so... Potluck, did you call it? Pot, potluck Radio. Oh, Potluck Radio. <laughs> or Potluck Podcasts. Yes, Potluck Podcasts. So this, this could be a rather spontaneous personal account of what the name Maitreya means to us all. So as far as previews goes today, we're not going to do much of that, but I can tell you I will be talking about the esoteric work of the Christ Maitreya, but as far as John I'm concerned... I actually haven't got a clue. <laughs> well, actually, that's not 100% true because I am reasonably confident that your contribution will leave us with plenty to ponder, to quote an Alice Bailey. What did she mm. used to say? She says, ponder, ponder on, on this. this. Mm. Mm. And at best, I hope we will get a glimpse today of the purpose and meaning of life. Hi, welcome back to Emergence News, and look, it's my pleasure to introduce John. Welcome to the program, John. What Thanks. have you brought to the table this Okay, time? well, as it's potluck, and as I've had um, a recent disclosure about who I actually am, um, I thought I'd talk about glamour. And when we talk about glamour in esoteric terms, we talk about emotions, the term astral, we talk about glamour and illusion, and basically it is the story or the illusion that you surround about yourself and what you believe and what you think about yourself. And it is a major issue for humanity. Um, and it's a major issue for people who are trying to develop and change. And just when you think you're becoming a better person, um, the mask slips. So, glamour by the master through Benjamin Krem. And he goes with, of all the problems which beset humanity, there is none greater than the problem of glamour. It provides the basis for all of our difficulties and dangers and holds the vast majority of humanity in thrall. It is at the root of every division and cleavage and the source of every dimension of pain and suffering. It has its roots in the ancient past of mankind and all but a very few are held under its sway. So when we're talking about glamour, when we talk about human beings, we're talking about virtues and vices. So glamour is the vices. Yes. Uh, Our personal vices? Uh, what he's saying is that the fact that we're human generates this emotional and astral field that we all kind of dip into, and it's inaccurate. 
Um, he goes on to say, essentially glamour originates in man's sensuous feeling apparatus, key word apparatus, the emotional astral body. And in man's identification with its action, so we believe what we feel basically, through wrong identification with his feelings and emotions, his desire nature, he has surrounded himself with and lost himself in thick fogs of illusion and unreality. This constitutes the glamour in which most people live out their lives. Glamour is illusion on the plane of the emotions and provides the greatest obstacle to progress. Just going to intersperse with, remember, we believe what we feel, but we don't to... have to because it's just emotion, right? Let me come back to the master because he knows a lot more about it than I do. Right. It throws a multitude of misconceptions across the path of the unwary and the loftiest idealist is no freer from its influence nay he is frequently more prone than the hardened cynic but at least i just want to jump here and say being positive is glamour being cynical is glamour being believing you're smart is glamour believing you're not smart is glamour believing you're right is glamour believing you're wrong is glamour so to come to grips with glamour, the master continues, humanity must recognise its mechanism, by which means the central heresy, love that word, that we are separate is created and maintained. All that tends to reinforce the sense of separateness is the result of the action of glamour. And all that seeks to undermine that heresy works for its destruction. Glamour resides in a notion that man's desires are real, what I feel is true, that they have their own intrinsic validity and purpose, whereas in truth, they are the cause of all unhappiness. No more real, no less transient than the mirage of the desert. He goes on to say many other ways to God, but the quickest and surest is the path of service. No other path so fully embodies the nature of God. He challenges us to take your path on, uh, take your place on this path and carry out the dictates of your soul. Follow the promptings of your heart and awaken to the needs of the world. Know that as you enter on the path of service, you accept your place within the plan and find your say, yourself well set upon the path to God. He goes on to say, be not afraid in the midst of the chaos and tension. Fear has no place in the present situation. Rather, see it as a challenge for your faith. Now, let's this glamour thing. It's the illusion. It's the mirage. It's the um, the self delusion that we fill our lives with. And as I said earlier, um, when you think you're clever, it's it's glamour. When you think you're not, it's glamour. So, what we have to do? How do we defeat this? How do we get through it? And Krem talks about honesty, sincerity, and detachment. detachment. And detachment is the key, right? Mm. The master talks about service as well. And I guess one of the things I've thought about is if you're practicing honesty, sincerity, and detachment, and the very and the very way that I say that tells me it's a glamour of mine, right, that I'm actually practicing this, does that lead to service or vice versa? If you are involved in service, and we believe we are, Nigel, um, does that lead to honesty, sincerity, and detachment? And I sometimes think it does. And if you're thinking about honesty, sincerity, and detachment, does that eventually drive you into service? I really don't know. Um, maybe a bit later on in the program, I'll talk about the prayer for the new age. It's a technique, it's a tool for overcoming this fear. And I think the relationship between glamour and illusion and fear is very, very profound. There's a link there, isn't we, there? We are frightened creatures and then take upon ourselves illusion to ameliorate or massage that fear. Yeah, because fear is something that virtually all of humanity suffers, suffers from. from. Mm. Yeah. I love the Namely of, the fear of death and then yeah, the, yeah. fear of loss. Fear, you know. mm. Mm -hmm. um, I love the Course in Miracles and Krem talks a lot about the Course in Miracles. Uh, the Course in Miracles propounds that humanity has two emotions, love and fear. Love is the opposite of fear, not hate. Love and fear are opposites. And you can only express one at a time, right? You can't do them both. 
So the parental quote of, as they're about to assault you, this hurts me more than it hurts you, is rubbish. It's love or fear. So what are most people expressing most of the time? Fear. Fear. And what enables you to manage that is this very strongly held belief system that creates this illusion, this glamour. And if you want to know more about fear, Krem writes books about it. Constant. Yeah. yeah. And and a lot about fear. And a lot of the stuff I've been talking about today, I got out of one of Benjamin Krem's books, The Art of Living, Living Within the Laws of Life. This is the Emergence News on Plains FM. For more information, go to shareinternational.org. Thank you, John. It's really interesting, the subject of glamour. Oh, it's frightening. It, we, we, we could dedicate a whole program to yeah, it, actually. Yeah. Well, but we're you... dedicating our lives to it, aren't we? <laughs> That's right. We're experts. <laughs> We've been experts at glamour <laughs> and listening to our feelings since the Atlantean times. Yes. Yeah. Thousands, millions of years, mm. thousands of yeah. incarnations. No, the human, the, the human condition is an expert at listening to its feelings first mm. rather than yeah. um, We're love. astrally polarised. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about the esoteric work of Maitreya. Another reason the story of Maitreya strikes the right chord for me is that he asks for no followers. He says he welcomes people with different views on life. He encourages people to maintain their religious beliefs if they are working for them. He says individuality is a major fact in life. It is essential. Individuality is essential. Yes. It's what gives us a sparkle. Yeah. The thing that we enjoy about each other. And that's what consolidates for me that my future is actually my responsibility. It's not the responsibility of a spiritual leader or a guru or an avatar. They're not going to solve my problems. My journey is my responsibility. It's your business. That's what sold me on the story of my triumph. Mm -hmm. His decision to return to full physical plane work and living on the physical level was not, we can be sure, lightly or easily taken. Alice Bailey, author Alice Bailey tells us that it took nine years from June 1936 to June 1945 for the decision to be made. The hierarchy, the spiritual hierarchy, is still working in a state of tension engendered by that momentous decision where Maitreya's entry into the modern world was on July the 19th, back in 1977. Since then, spontaneous appearances, where he's been healing, uplifting, adding light to the world, not overwhelming anyone, creating harmony out of chaos, and awakening humanity to new possibilities. And I'll give you some examples of those new possibilities. Think unity, think collaboration, think goodwill, working together cooperatively. Think right relationships with your neighbors, respecting each other to the best of your ability, inspiring political and economic policy that looks after everyone, not just the selective wealthy few. Maitreya has been awakening humanity, including the recovery of the environment and the well-being of the planet. And notice how that issue has gathered momentum. David Suzuki, back in the 1980s, first started his campaign in that decade. But even earlier than that, David Attenborough is a well-known environmentalist in the media. Campaigner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's been going for decades, isn't mm -hmm. he? Their views and their concerns are not considered radical anymore, but they were a few Absolutely. years ago. Attenborough was talking another language back mm. in the 50s and 60s mm. about this. Mm. And even David Suzuki, he's a well-known Canadian mm. environmentalist, amazing guy actually. Mm. He's worth looking up on the yeah. online. They're con it was considered radical back in the 70s and 80s, mm. but it's not anymore. So much so, that there are very few now that deny climate change. Now, that's a big change from just five years ago, where many educated, intelligent individuals would claim climate change is a hoax. But those views don't get airtime anymore. The United Nations Director just recently, the United Nations Director General, was calling on all governments to stop ignoring this issue. Now is the hour. Stop procrastinating. 
Issues such as, the, such as this is the work of the spiritual hierarchy and the work of Maitreya, working behind the scenes as they always have mm -hmm. until now. They are now gradually emerging, and that's what this program's all about. Right, but also their predictions are emerging too, particularly the one about young people, the youth stepping forward and claiming their rights. Uh, and we've talked about their maturity mm. and their political activism. You know, the new model, Nigel, we've talked about that as well. Yes, it's not the Toyota anymore. No, no. Well, it is the Toyota, but it's It's new. got the same body, but it's not. Yeah. the interior is not the same, no, is it? No, no, different software. So and, and one of the reasons why I subscribe to Benjamin Krem's story of the reappearance of Maitreya and the hierarchy is that he repeatedly says, remain open-minded. Even if you are open to the possibility of this story, even if you're open to the possibility of Maitreya being possible, I don't totally agree with the concept, but even if it's possible, hey, that's fine. Yeah. And that's what I like about Benjamin Krim. He's not telling you to be a hundred subscribe to it a hundred percent. He's fine if you want to sit on the fence, say fifty fifty, that's fine also. Mm -hmm. At least you're remaining open to the possibility that this story could have an element of truth to it. Ponder on what feels comfortable both in your head and your heart. I was at a lecture with Benjamin Krem and um, he was asking for open mind. He was talking about an open mind and he said it's the rarest thing on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> he had a sense of humour. <laughs> he had a great sense of humour actually. Before Maitreya openly declares himself, much transformation will take place, and surely that's evident. There are millions already responding to this energy, as John, you just said, especially the youth. Mm -hmm. There is a wave of new thinking. Our political and economic systems are now in for constant change and adjustment. And this is going to feel uncomfortable for some of us. Notice how the young people seem more politically active, more responsible. They're even more aware of what they're eating, what they purchase, how they travel. They're much more aware of what they study. To fix the world, this world, may seem a daunting task, but equal to this daunting task is a mighty avatar and a mighty army of young people who are arriving when we need it most. The incoming potencies and energies of Aquarius, those seventh ray energies, are powerful and they cannot be controlled by any oligarchy. Mm -hmm. The esoteric work of Maitreya is, for the most, hidden from most people. And most people are going to have an extraordinary revelation. The world as a whole does not know, most of the world does not know that the spiritual hierarchy even exists. Mm -hmm. They have heard of the Christ they know that the Christ exists, but living up in heaven in some remote place in the sky, waiting until the world, until the end of the world, and then return on a cloud. Now that, as you know, is the, the general expectation of Orthodox Christians. When Maitreya does openly declare himself, I am in agreement with Benjamin Krem when he says, Maitreya will introduce to the world, as a whole, the fact that he has been living in the Himalayas. Rather than, he, rather than in heaven mm -hmm. this past 2,000 years or more, and that he leads a large group of advanced men and that they too, in growing numbers, will be in the world. There are still billions of people who still haven't heard of the name Maitreya. However, the, the emergence is becoming more obvious. It's now a bit difficult to not accept the possibility that there is something quite extraordinary underway, something extraordinary happening. Look, I think that the majority of people are starting to realise there's problems, uh, socially, economic, politically, uh, environmentally. I think people are, are waking up to that. Uh, I don't think people are aware there's answers. Mm. That actually, that's a good point. Actually, um, to to quote Benjamin Krem again, that we are witnessing the the decline of our civilization. Mm. I feel much safer when I think like that because that has an element of intelligence. So, of course, civilizations come and go. Um, but if you look at each individual issue facing us today, it seems almost impossible. But if you can say the whole thing's breaking down, then you can accept we need a new one. 
Do you know what I mean? If if you're driving an old car and the, and the wheels keep um, wobbling, then you try and deal with that. But if you can look at step back and look at the old car and go, I need a new car, um, then you're most more likely to get one. It's a bigger decision, sometimes yeah. momentous. Yeah. Mm. No avatar has been so equipped for this task, though, John. And he's not on his own, and that's reassuring, mm. isn't it? Mm. He's not on his own. Planet Earth is too important to let this to let the self-centered oligarchy destroy this jewel in our galaxy mm. because it is a jewel this planet mm. it's mm. a beautiful place for us mm. and we're just destroying it mm. and what's happening in the ukraine right now is a graphic example of that benjamin kramer said many times that a nuclear war will not be allowed and mm. neither will world war three uh, and we won't be allowed to destroy the planet so um yeah i yeah people should be concerned about ukraine uh, however i don't think it's the end of the world you either believe this to be true or you don't, and that's what I was saying earlier. You can sit on the fence, but even if there's a part of you, even if there's only 10% of your opinion that says there's a possibility that it's true. But for me, this is the greatest story in the world. His arrival, which is in process, is the most important event in the history of the world so far. If it's not, then oligarchy bankrolling wars, and for me, light must triumph over darkness. The externalization of the esoteric work of our spiritual hierarchy, the externalization for the first time in some 98,000 years. Maitreya and his large group of disciples will be physically on our planet for the next age, and that's over two the next years. two and a half thousand years. A great change in human consciousness will gradually unfold, and that's the goal greater by far in depth and range than at any previous point in history. I'm on your side, Nigel. Okay, we're going we're gonna to throw the ball back to you, John, because you're going to talk about the prayer of, for the new age. Right. Now, one of the things that Karim has given us to deal with fear, sorry, the esoteric teachings give us to deal with fear and to deal with glamour is a thing called the prayer for the new age. You'll find it on the Share International website and you'll find it in the back of most of Benjamin Cream's books. I'm going to go through it now. The prayer for the new age. I am the creator of the universe. I am the father and mother of the universe. Everything came from me. Everything shall return to me mind, spirit, and body are my temples for the self to realize in them my supreme being and becoming. And I use that daily. It's like a mantra, if you like. Okay, this is what Krem says. The prayer for the new age given by Maitreya, the world teacher, is a great mantra or affirmation with an invocative effect. It will be a powerful tool in the recognition by us that man and God are one, that there is no separation. The I is the divine principle behind all creation. The self emanates from and is identical to the divine principle. The most effective way to use this mantra is to say or think the words with focused will while holding the attention at the Arjuna center between the eyebrows. When the mind grasps the meaning of the concepts and simultaneously the will is brought to bear, those concepts will be activated and the mantra will work. If it is said seriously every day, there will grow inside you a realization of your true self. And that is what we're all after. And you know, that's true. Mm. Every, every time you use it, you just it starts to make more sense. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Mm. Try it. Mm. All this information can be found on the Share International website, www.share-international.org. And also don't forget the podcasts, which are available on the Plains FM website. We welcome your comments, questions and feedback. Please contact us at emergencenews at gmail.com. Mm -hmm.